What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. We got a mailbag for the people today. It is questions you guys ask on a community post I put out earlier this week. So if you're ever wondering, hey, how can I be in a future mailbag show? Really simple. Subscribe and comment your questions on that community post. So let's get into the first question. It comes in from our friend Gerald Reed. Could the Broncos trade for middle linebacker Deion Jones for Dalton Reisner? And a 2022 fourth rounder. You mean 2023. But let's explore the idea. Because I kind of like the idea of a surface of, hey, linebacker core is a little weak. Could we get a star like Deion Jones? So if the Broncos wanted to explore this trade, step one is, hey, what's Jones's contract? Denver would take on about $10 million because a handful of his con or some of his contract has already been paid by the Falcons. So you got to kind of find the deficit. But $10 million for a middle linebacker? In 2022, it's a good idea if it was 2012. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go full black eyes peas on you guys, but it, it just doesn't really make sense in this day and age and the direction that the NFL is heading in. You're just not seeing a lot of teams give big money to linebackers. Like, there's a drop-off, okay? If you've got an elite linebacker, sure, that makes sense. Pay him. But if, your lineba if, the, if the linebacker is not in the Tier 1 of LBs, no, you just go cheap and you find a free agent. I mean, the Broncos gave Josie Jewell a two-year, $11 million contract, and I bet they don't want to pay any more than that. But this is the trade idea that Gerald proposed. So Reisner and a 2023 fourth, and the Broncos get Deion Jones. I think this makes a little bit of sense of like, hey, what's the biggest weakness on this Broncos team right now? Probably linebacker. So let's ship off Reisner. You can start minor, uh, Quinn Miners anyway, and you toss in a fourth. You probably don't even need to do that. Might be overkill to get Deion Jones. But I'll let you guys be the GM. Would you do this trade? A for accept or D for decline? Let me know what you think down below. Next question comes in from Jacob Youngblood, longtime commenter here at the channel. Will Russell Wilson finally get an MVP this season? It's a good question, Jacob. I think in order for Russell Wilson to win the MVP this season, here's what his stats would have to look like. And I'm largely basing this on what Aaron Rodgers did last year. Close to a nice 69% completion percentage, well north of 4,000 yards, and a good touchdown ratio of 5 to 1. 35 touchdowns to 5 interceptions. Somewhere in that range, I think, is what it takes for Russell Wilson to win the MVP. But let's send the guy some good vibes, you know what I mean? Let's put his jersey number down below. Type 3 if you think Russ can win MVP or even hopefully just get a vote in 2022. Let Russell Wilson feel the good YouTube vibes here from Broncos country down below. We got a question coming in from Michael Polt. Do you do the Broncos trade any of last year's starters this year? And who is it? It's a good question, Michael. It's a fun question. Because we just love talking about trades. Like, guys love doing a couple things. One, just talking about random players. You know what I mean? You can just think of, like, uh, Monte Ball, right? Random Broncos player. Or just trading people. Because it's just fun. It's just fun to play mad at. But what about Mike Purcell? A player who's kind of lost his starting job, right? DJ Jones comes in to be the nose tackle. I don't think Purcell can move out to the defensive end opposite of Draymond Jones. And then you think about... With the extension he got, three-year extension back in 2020. This year, he's got a $4.3 million cap hit. It has a base salary of $3 million, which means if a team were to trade for him, it's always a little complicated, but go with that $3 million figure. That's what the new team would have to take on. Maybe a team out there goes, you know what? We're in the NFC. We feel we are one extra piece away from our defensive line rotation, from being a real contender. And Denver goes, yeah, we need some draft capital back because we lost our first and second next year to the Seahawks. If you want to throw us a fifth rounder, we'll take it. I, I think that could be a viable trade because the Broncos may end up having to cut Purcell. They're not going to pay that much, I think, to have someone be their backup nose tackle. Before we get to the rest of the questions here on the show, if you're looking for a channel that's going to cover the Broncos throughout the entire offseason, and I mean the entire offseason, the dog days. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to keep you guys informed and entertained May, June, July until we get to training camp. Hit that big red button and subscribe.
We got a question coming in from one of the best hotels in Disney Channel history, Nolan Tipton. Been a while since I have asked a question, but lots of people think that our team will still be mediocre. What are your thoughts on how we are going to do this year? What game are you excited for? What are you excited for in general? Thanks, Matthew. All right, well, appreciate the question, Nolan. Happy to have you back here, by the way. Let me kind of break down these questions one by one. As for what am I thinking this year, here are three bold predictions I've got in 2022. The Broncos end the losing streak to the Kansas City Chiefs. Denver is AFC West champs for the first time since 2015. Broncos sweep the Raiders as well. And then let's go back to the question because we had a couple more questions uh, Nolan tossed our way. So that's what I think about the Broncos this year. What game am I most excited for? It's got to be Kansas City at home. You know what I mean? It's got to be the game where Denver ends the streak at home against the Chefs. What am I most excited for in general? To see Russell Wilson, right? I know that's cliche, so if I had to dive a little deeper, what about Jerry Judy? Really looking like the 15th overall pick. That's probably what I'm most excited for because anyone could say Russell Wilson, but how can Russell Wilson impact this team the most? He's going to rise the talent up like Jerry Judy. So that's what I'll say I am most excited for. Appreciate the question, Nolan, and I think you'll like this next part here. If you hate the Chiefs, type FKC. Let's get it going in the comment section. Everyone get down there at least once. Put FKC if you hate the Chiefs down below. Next question comes in from Joey Baca. Joey, appreciate the time you spent asking. Do you think Greg Dulcich will be a top 10 tight end after his rookie year? And how far do you think the Broncos will go this upcoming season? It's a good question, Joey. It's a fun one, too. Do I think Greg Dulcich will be a top 10 tight end after this season? No, not yet. I, I think this team is going to go to the playoffs, too. That, that's the answer to the second half of your question. It's difficult for a tight end in his rookie season when he's second on the depth chart behind Alberto to break through and be a top 10 tight end. Maybe. I'm going to say no. I think this team make the makes the playoffs, though. It's a crowded AFC this year. There's a ton of talent, but Russell Wilson, and remember this defense last year was a very good defense. And credit to Vic Fangio, he's a good defensive coach, but you're keeping a lot of your key pieces, and in fact, you're improving on a lot of your key pieces. As for what Greg Dulcich could do this season, though, what about these projections? 400 yards and three touchdowns? Those are some pretty good numbers right there for a tight end, too. You got to remember, that's not your starting tight end. So I'll go with somewhere in that range for good old flowy Greg D. We got one last question on today's show. It comes in from Eddie Martinez. Which of the new rookies will be getting will get a starting position this season with the Broncos? I'm sorry. I'm gonna be, call me a cop. I don't have an answer for you. Barring an injury, I don't see any of these rookies starting this year. Right? Let's just assume by starting I mean week one. Now I don't think Nick Benito's taking Chubb or Gregory spots here. All right. And then you think about who else? Maybe EU? Okay. I could see him starting on the opposite side of Draymond Jones. Maybe he could edge out McTelvin Ajim. So that's a possibility right there. The defensive lineman from Iowa State. Damari Mathis? Probably not. Dulcich will be behind Albert O. If you want to count Montreal Washington for kick returns and punt returns, there. There's your answer. He beats out Seth Wills Williams or Tyree Cleveland. Um, but... As a whole, I don't see any rookie really being a starter week one in the sense that you and I talking about, except for maybe EU. Who is your favorite draft pick, though? Right? Who is the guy that you think George Payton nailed in the draft and he's going to be a stud for years to come? Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. And hey, while you're down there, make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate everyone that tuned in to today's mailbag, made us a part of your weekend. Hit that big red button, subscribe. If you're looking for a spot to get Broncos news, rumors, say hell, trade rumors like uh, Russell Wilson getting traded to the Broncos coverage, yeah. We're your channel for that. Hit that big red button. Stay in the know for the entire offseason. That's going to do it for us on today's show. I'm going to catch up with you guys later with more Broncos news and rumors.